Today, we're talking about astrology. And before you're like, wait, why is scientific American talking about astrology? Just give me a second. Back in the Middle Ages, scientists and physicians actually cared a lot about your astrological sign. First of all, back in medieval Europe, astronomy and astrology were totally tangled up in each other. Astronomy is, of course, the study of the stars and other celestial bodies. And back in medieval Europe, there wasn't much you could study about celestial bodies beyond how you saw them moving in the sky. Astrology was the interpretation of those movements. I recently got to talk to Larissa Grolemund, who's a curator at the Getty Museum in Los Angeles, and she's behind a current exhibit all about how astrology and astronomy used to be one and the same. For people living in medieval Europe, astrology was utilized in ways that I think we would be unfamiliar with today. So in terms of the zodiac and the constellations of the zodiac being really integral to the way that people experience time. But by the 15th century, it was also tied up with something called humoral balance. The idea that the body has four main fluids in it, that's black and yellow bile, blood and phlegm. And Larissa told me that your astrological sign was actually supposed to dictate your personal humoral balance. It affects the way that you're treated medically, the potential course of an illness that you might have. Um, it may affect when and where on the body um, you bloodlet uh, from. That may also affect your day-to-day -day diet. And so there's this really complex system that develops toward the end of the Middle Ages where your sun sign, your rising sign, um, the position of the celestial bodies at your birth starts to affect not just your personality, but really the kinds of things you should be doing to maintain optimal health. If you want to learn more about the history of astrology and astronomy, you should check out our podcast, Science Quickly. You can find the link in our bio.